Okay, by a show of hands, who here wants to dig up a lifeless body? Nobody? No? Maybe raise the dead? <laughs> Greetings, my fellow creeps and freaks. I'm Tom, and welcome to Monster Gab, where we love to talk about classic and vintage horror. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a film that was released in 1972 called Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Good advice. <laughs> but seriously though, what a movie title. That also depends on what part of the world you're from, because it's also known as Revenge of the Dead, Things from the Dead, and Zreeks, which is a really weird movie title. I've, I've never heard of that before. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but let me know in the comments if you're familiar with this film as Zreeks. Now, the movie as I know it to be, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, doesn't actually have any children in it, but I'll get to that later. A very quick edit, guys. I won't mention that later because I completely forgot, so I'll explain it now. The reason why the movie's called Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things is because the main character refers to the rest of the characters in the film as his children. He's kind of belittling and it's his way of keeping them down. Anyway, back to the review. It's also referred to as a zombie movie. I don't really want to get into a habit of giving away spoilers on this channel. However old the film is, my attitude is there's always somebody out there who hasn't seen it yet. But I think it's fairly misleading to call it a zombie movie. If you're going to go into this and expect a film full of the living dead, you're going to be disappointed. There's only really a small portion of the film that actually contains zombies. The movie is also listed as a horror comedy. Which, again, I find quite misleading, because at no point in this movie do I actually find it funny. Apart from the few moments where there's some bad acting, but that's unintentional. In my opinion, I don't class this film as a comedy, I, I literally don't. I just consider it to be a horror film, and that's it. The film was made on a very low budget of $50,000, and was shot in the space of just two weeks. It was written and directed by Bob Clark, and it stars the likes of Alan Ormsby, Jane Daly, Anya Ormsby, Bruce Solomon, Valerie Mamchez, Jeff Gillen, Paul Cronin. Now you're probably wondering, who? And that's kind of fair, because apart from one or two of them, uh, most of these people were just Bob Clark's college friends. That's right, when you make a film on a low budget, you can't afford high-profile actors, you have to get your friends on board. And that's exactly what he did. One thing that I would like to mention is many of the characters in this film share the same name as the actors who are playing them. It just goes to show how kind of half arsed this movie really is. For instance, Alan Ormsby plays the part of Alan. Anya Ormsby plays the part of Anya. Valerie Mamchez plays the part of Val. Paul plays Paul. Jeff plays Jeff. You get the picture. Honestly though, I don't have a problem with that. The movie is obviously low budget and with that it has a certain charm about it. So here is the synopsis then. A group of six theatrical actors decide to venture onto an isolated island at night for reasons uh, I honestly don't know, though certain web pages specify, and I quote, for a bit of fun. <laughs> Yet one of the members, Alan, played by Alan Ormsby, uses this opportunity to rope the others into taking part in an unsacred ritual in order to raise the dead. I repeat, I have no idea why. It's not really explained. The island is used only as a graveyard for not simply the dead, but people who were of ill repute, such as rapists and murderers, etc. After breaking into an old abandoned and rat-infested cottage, the theatre troupe make the decision to spend the night. And after Alan tells a few morbid tales and bullies the other members about how awful their acting skills are, the ritual takes place and eventually, followed by a very delayed reaction, causes the dead to rise from their graves and everyone has to survive a horde of flesh-eating zombies. When will they learn? So let's talk about this movie then. Well, as I mentioned earlier, this is a low budget movie and it really does reek of that too. By no means is this an unwatchable movie, but I can't butter it up and tell you that it's great either. Honestly though, I really do enjoy it. 
at times the cinematography, the acting and the dialogue all appear kind of amateurish. But that's what gives it its charm, I believe. It's almost like you're watching a college project. If this movie was made today, I just don't think it would hold up because it, it would lack the atmosphere that this movie gives due to the fact that it is low budget. It's almost aged like a fine wine. Right from the beginning of the film, you will know what to expect. And if that's the kind of film you're looking for, then you won't be disappointed. It is a typical, low-budget, cheesy 70s horror film. The characters don't really have a lot to offer in this movie, apart from the lead character, Alan, who's played by Alan Ormsby. He's kind of the leader of this theatrical troupe, um, the manager, I suppose. He's definitely a dominant figure. It seems to be quite fitting that he's the leader of a theatrical group because his persona is very theatrical. He also comes across as quite exaggerated and also fairly cruel as well. Pretty patronising towards the other members of the group. He really does love to remind them uh, how poor they are at their jobs and how their acting skills really aren't up to par. Not to mention that he's full of ghoulish stories and loves to tell these horrific tales to the other members of the group. Like I said, the other characters don't really have much to offer, though the female characters are more interesting than, say, the other male characters. Uh, the part of Anya, for instance, she just plays a bit of a really creepy weirdo. Otherwise, the whole cast just makes you feel like you're watching a live-action poor man Scooby-Doo. Still, I find it kind of weird that when Alan suggests that they take part in a satanic ritual, which involves digging up a corpse from its grave, I find it fairly unrealistic in how compliant the rest of the characters are in going ahead with it. It does seem to me that the characters are fairly desperate to keep hold of their job roles as actors. Now, I kind of get it, you know, you shouldn't take a job for granted, and maybe this is their dream job, but I kind of feel like people do have their limits, and, well, if it was me, I'd just tell this guy where to get off. Going back to what I said earlier, Alan does like to bully the rest of the group, and often he threatens to sack them or tells them they can quit at any point. There is actually a moment in the movie where two of the characters state that they're frightened and they want to leave, and uh, Alan says to them, well, have a good swim. <laughs> Followed by, don't forget to drop your script off at the theatre when you get back. And apparently that is enough blackmail for them to comply and dig up this corpse. I do get what the director is trying to do here, he's trying to make the audience aware that the rest of the members really can't leave the island so they are stuck and if they don't comply then they're going to lose their jobs. But I kind of find it fairly unrealistic, I mean, you know, they outnumber this guy, surely they could just stand up to him and say no. I mean, they arrived on this island by a boat, what's stopping them from taking it back? I mean, if we're going to talk about the flaws of this movie, it does have some fairly unrealistic or untypical responses to situations. For example, most of this group don't think twice about digging up a corpse from its grave. And only when Alan suggests taking the corpse back to the cottage does Terry, played by Jane Daly, develop some kind of moral fibre and say, well, hang on, we need to show some respect for the dead. But it should be pointed out that you were happy enough with everyone digging it out of the ground in the first place. I mean, you said nothing then. And speaking of the character of Terry, there's also a scene where she stands directly in front of the barrel of a shotgun that she's just witnessed being loaded. But to be fair, I think that's just an oversight and an error of directing. This movie does leave me asking the question, what purpose does Alan have for holding this ritual? I mean, he's planned it all along because he's taken this kind of sacred spell book with him. But it's not really explained why or what purpose he has for doing it. And it's not really explained why these are a group of theatrical actors either. It's not really relevant in any way. They could have just been a bunch of friends. And it's at this point of the movie where the ritual doesn't appear to work at first. You see Alan's ego is completely bruised and anyone going into this film expecting a zombie movie might be disappointed at this moment. But for me personally, I actually like the fact that this movie is a bit of a slow burner. Now, I know there are many people out there that don't like slow burner movies, and that's usually because they've got a very short attention span. No, no, let's not go there, okay? We're not going to get in a debate of why The Witch is a good movie or a bad movie, okay? Let's, let's just drop it. But it is a slow burner, and I do appreciate that. In fact, I would say three quarters of this film is more about getting to know the characters and feeling the atmosphere of the movie, and the last quarter just goes all Michael Jackson's thriller. Seriously, if you do like zombie movies, I would still hang on till the end, because it really does get chaotic. 
And that for me is enough because I would say that zombie movies aren't particularly my favourite kind of movie. Um, I appreciate them and I, I do enjoy them, um, but this is kind of subtle. They, they kind of leave it for a, a major climax and that to me just makes the movie great. Well, I say it's chaotic, but the very absolute ending of this film is actually quite somber. And again, I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but with the way the story goes, uh, this movie leaves the audience with an inevitable feeling of dread and doom, and it just ends with pure silence as the credits roll up. And that in itself is actually quite creepy, and they did a good job here. As for the music or the score, it's actually quite weird, especially at the beginning during the opening credits, because it's mostly just kind of synthetic noises and sounds. It's kind of hard to call it music, really. It sounds like something that would belong in an old sci-fi movie rather than a horror. I mean, it is music, but it's hard to kind of call it music when there's absolutely no melodies in it, which is exactly how I feel about modern music in the charts these days. Throughout the movie though, the music does actually do a good job. There's plenty of orchestral hits when it's needed, and every now and then there's these kind of whistling tones that really do blend in with the night creatures which are part of the ambience of the film. Otherwise, the film is mostly silent, as it should be because it gives it a really eerie vibe. Most of the time you are just hearing night creatures and nocturnal animals, which is typical, but again, goes with that vibe, uh, especially when you see the graveyard and it's just made to look typically scary. There's gravestones and head crosses that are all leaning over and there's plenty of mist. Obviously it's pitch black because the movie's held at midnight. Very typical, but again it works and it ticks all the boxes for me. In fact, I would say it actually looks quite impressive for a film that's made on such a low budget. Same goes for the zombies too, most of them look great. And that's actually a really good segue to discuss the pros and the cons of this movie because the biggest pro for me is the fact that the creators really did do the best with the low budget that they had. I think the graveyard looks absolutely brilliant and I think the zombies look great too. Apart from one, it really does look like a guy is just wearing a mask, but overall I actually think it looks really, really good. Yeah, all the makeup on the zombies and the way they all look and walk around and that, it looks absolutely spectacular. Another pro for me, apart from those really weird synthy sounds, is the music in the film. It really does do a good job here. And the other pro I'd like to give to this movie is the ambience and the feeling it gives off. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that it is low budget and I don't think it would be recreated the same way if it was made today. The biggest con for me is the fact that the movie is labelled as a horror comedy and because of that there is no point in this movie where I laughed other than, like I said before, the unintended moments like the bad acting or the dialogue etc. If this movie is intended to be funny, well it didn't do it for me, so as far as I'm concerned that is a major con or it's just labelled wrong. Another con for me I suppose is the acting because it's not great but again that is to be expected with a movie like this so it's a little unfair but you know I've got to stick something on the con list haven't I? And so with that my final con has got to be the fact that this movie is just very unoriginal, it's very uninspired and it's nothing you haven't seen before. And really, that's about all I have to say about this movie. I tried looking for some trivia online, but I really couldn't find much, other than the fact that Bob Clark did intend to make a remake of this film, but he sadly passed away in 2007, and since then nothing's really come to light. So that's it, I guess. Review's over, apart from the score out of 10. It's not an easy one, because I do like the film, but I can't lie to you and say it's a great film. Um, I suppose I'm going to give it 5.5 out of 10, but I don't want that to put you off from watching it. Like I said, I actually really enjoy this movie. It's not great, but it's still enjoyable, it's still watchable, and I think there's many of you out there that will appreciate this film for what it is. So there you have it. Have any of you guys seen this film? And if you have, what did you think? Is there anything that I missed out in this review or did I get anything wrong? Let me know in the comments section. If you haven't seen this film, do you fancy watching it now you've seen this review? Again, do let me know. And are there many of you that are familiar with this film but with its different title of Zreeks? Please do let me know. Tell me if you've got the VHS tape somewhere. That would be absolutely brilliant. Send me a picture on Facebook. And that's it. Yeah, so... Uh, I suppose we'll do our bit then, shall we? Until next time. 
I don't know who they are. But if you don't subscribe, they will get you. So make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell if you haven't done so already, like the video if you did indeed like it, leave a comment and share this with your friends. Thank you so much guys, take care, see you soon, bye bye.